Welcome back to Roger Max Drum Shack. Today I'm going to go off the beaten path and since I've recently embraced technology and samples, I'm going to show you how to program a drum track in your DAW without waking up the neighbors, uh, having to mic up an entire drum set, or perhaps you're not a drummer and you need to add a track for a demo to send out to your bandmates or just to get an idea down. So uh, you'll see I have my uh, DAW open here. This is Studio One. It's the workstation that I like, but you can use whatever you want. And uh, we'll get started. First thing I need to do is make an instrument track. So all of my instruments are over here. I like Stephen Slate sampler, so we're going to start with that. Open that up. Now the first thing I need to do is to load the right MIDI map. Now, if you're not familiar with MIDI and you're operating in the digital workstation realm, you probably need to get familiar with it. Um, we could take a week talking about that, but you may need to read some books, watch some YouTube. I'm just going to use the standard map, and we're going to construct a kit. And I'm just going to use the first preset because I'm not going to be picky today. And... All right, so we've got that going, and we can close that out now. Okay, uh, recording is armed. Now, the first part of this, the just the basic kick and snare, I'm just going to record real time on my uh, MIDI controller. I'm using a, a little M Audio key station. Uh, you can use whatever control surface you want. You can even MIDI an electronic kit into this and play it in real time which is normally what I would do but like I said you may not be a drummer and maybe you can't do that so we're going to show you how to do that without having to be a drummer as long as you can count okay so we're record armed and we're going to record this in real time so I'm going to hit my record button down here and get started All right, so that's a two bar little riff there. Now what we're gonna record today is uh, Rosanna by Toto. And it's a pretty complicated riff. So uh, that's basically just the bare bones of the riff. Now a little history for you. Uh, that riff is uh, kind of a cross between what's called a purdy shuffle and Fool in the Rain by Led Zeppelin. Um, kind of interesting. It's a cool lick. It's very hard to play. So uh, we're going to program it. So you'll see my little MIDI notes there. Um, I'm going to set up a loop from there to there. It's the two measures. Also, I'm going to set my grid to eighth note triplets because it's a shuffle, so I, we're going to need triplets. And let's double click that track. Now you'll see the piano roll or the MIDI editor comes up. I call it the piano roll because that's what it looks like. So here we see all of our MIDI notes. Let's move this over just a hair. All right, there we are. Uh, you'll see your note names here on the keyboard. And then across here, each one of these little boxes represents an eighth note triplet. And you'll see the three, that's measure three, measure four. These dark lines are the downbeats. So that'd be uh, one, two, three, four. And then the smaller lines are going to be your triplets. So I can already see we've got some uh, things a little bit out of place. This kick drum note is not quite on the downbeat. Uh, that one's kind of lying in between two triplets. That snare drum's just a little bit early. That note's pretty close. That one's in between again, and that snare note's a little early. So we've got snap here and quantize all activated. 
So we're just going to move that kick drum note and snap it to the downbeat. I'm going to snap that one there. Snare drum there. That's pretty close, but we'll get it perfect just for fun. That note falls there. And then that snare drum there. Now I've got a loop set up. We'll go ahead and activate that loop and we'll listen to the riff here. All right, sounds good. Now, in the original version, this very last triplet going into the next phrase of the riff, there's a little bass drum pickup note right there. So we can just go to that line, C1, to that note, and double click, and it will stick the kick drum right in there. Now since it's a pickup, I don't want it quite as loud as the downbeat, so we're going to turn it down about half, and you'll see that this is marked velocity. Um, it's just showing you what the velocities or the volume of all these notes are. And while we're at it, we're going to turn that kick drum down just a little bit. All right, now let's listen to it again. Okay, now let's get into the shuffle portion of this. Now the shuffle happens in the hi-hat, and it's basically the first and third triplet of every beat. So let's find our hi-hat. There it is right there. So we're just going to add our hi-hats on the first and third triplet of every beat. Basically, I'm just double-clicking these boxes and it's putting the hi-hat in there. All right, there they are. So let's listen to that now. Okay, it's there, but it doesn't feel right to me. And that's because no drummer would play a shuffle like that. Um, they would accent the downbeats and these little upbeats here are going to be softer so you get that that pulse that da -da 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 -da. so we're going to pick those third triplets just hold down the shift key pick those all right and that one's already selected and we're going to turn those down We'll give them about 50%. All right, now let's listen to it, see what it feels like. All right, let's take the first ones. And turn them up just a little bit. Okay. Now let's listen. Okay. That one. That one. That one need to come up just a little bit. All right. 
Okay, so we're good there. Now, we're going to get into the the real feel of this shuffle and add some snare drum notes. Now, this has ghost notes in between all of these hi-hat notes. And if you don't know what a ghost note is, it's a very quiet note played on the snare drum. And it's really just for feel. They're going to be barely audible. So we're going to find our snare drum note. There it is. We're going to start putting snare drum notes in between these triplets. So, whoops. Not there. Delete that. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to play this back and it's going to be painfully ridiculous. Okay, that's terrible. That's because these ghost notes are way too loud. So we're going to pick all the ghost notes. So the only thing we're not turning down are the back beats, which happen not right here and right here. So let's take all of those guys. Now you'll notice, we can give them about 20% or so. You'll notice that uh, as the volume comes down, the note the sound of the drum actually changes, and that's the really cool thing about uh, Stephen Slate drums or any of the the uh, more quality drum samplers. It's actually the soft notes are a different sample than the loud notes. It's not just a loud note turned down. So uh, you get a really cool sound. So we've got our ghost notes way down. Now let's listen to it. All right, I like the sound of that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate all of this. Get my tool here. We're gonna take that riff right there and we're gonna duplicate it. Now on my, on my workstation, that's gonna be D. So we duplicated that about five times. And let's go right here. Now in the original song, it opens with a little drum fill. It's only one beat long, and it's just a little triplet fill. Bucket it up. So we're gonna put that fill in. We'll give it two snare hits and a kick drum. And we're gonna Turn it down to make it kind of subtle. And then let's make this a crash cymbal. Now the cool thing is I can just take this note and make it whatever I want. So there's a crash cymbal right there. Okay. Now we're going to disengage our loop here. Go all the way back to the beginning. And now let's listen. Now the cool thing about this is, now that I've got the basic lick down, the uh, entire drum groove down, um, 
If I want to find the measures where I want to add a fill, all I have to do is go in and, and change it in that measure. I don't have to redo the whole thing. So that's it. We've got Rosanna programmed. And let's take another listen. Back to the beginning. All right, that sounds good. So that's it. That's how you can program your own drum riffs. Uh, in my next video, I'm going to show you how to take this track and actually break it out into separate tracks so that you have your kick and your snare and all of your parts on separate faders so you can mix this as they would in a studio with everything separated so that you can EQ everything and uh, apply your effects however you want. And that is it. I'll see you next time.